Hello, my name is Saurabh and I'll be continuing with this tutorials on programming computational fluid dynamics. So today we are going to truly speaking actually start with the coding of computational fluid dynamics because last time it was just an introduction. So let's start with finite volume methods. So, in case of finite volume methods, especially in case of 1D, that, that is what we are going to talk about today, we have, we consider each of this as a cell, which is basically the discretized form of the con uh, complete domain. And let us say that this cell is of width delta x, and the ith cell begins at i minus half and ends at i plus half. Okay. So this is the equation that we are going to solve. This is the partial differential equation, which is going to be the general form of flow equation in our case. So to do that, what we do is we integrate this equation over the domain, basically not the domain, over that small cell. So when we do that, this particular term here can be written by taking out the time derivative and keeping the rest inside the integral. Uh, however, the other term here simplifies easily because uh, we have a space derivative here. So, taking an integral over a space derivative just makes it uh, keeps a variable and we can then apply the limits from x up minus half to x up plus half and we end up with something like this. So, f uh, f i plus half minus f i minus half. This is an interesting term. And now, when you look at this term, it looks somewhat like a uh, somewhat like an average. The only thing that is missing is one upon delta x. So, if you multiply delta x and divide delta x, you will be you will, we will end up with delta x here, and this uh, term along with 1 upon delta x will become the average value u bar. So basically this is the average value inside this cell i. Yeah, I could have put a i subscript here. Yeah, I have put a i subscript here. So uh, once we take delta x on the other side, we will end up with this form. And then we can also use, uh, we can also integrate this with uh, over time. And then once we do that, we if we use the Euler integral, we'll uh, end up with this term here. Uh, well, f here will become the average values over time once we apply the uh, integrals. I have not written it specifically, uh, but yeah, that is what will happen. And finally, we can progress in time by using uh, this form. That is, we I've just kept this term on the left hand side, and the remaining terms I have taken on the right hand side. This is a very important step that is reconstruction from the average values. Now, if you observe in the previous slide, uh, we ended up with the average values. So, at this point of time, we can assume that we know the values at time level n, but we know the values of the average. We know the average values at each cell, in each cell. Now, what we want to do is using the average values, assume that these blue lines are the average values. I've just uh, drawn them horizontal indicating that uh, these are the values for the complete cell uh, and using this average values we need to calculate the reconstructed values now for example assume these three average values and we can reconstruct this red lines are the reconstructed form of the uh, distribution inside each cell the important thing here is that this red lines have to represent the average value that is if you take a integral of uh, this function over this cell then we should get exactly this blue lines or blue values okay so this is important uh, so now once we know the uh, this values that is this function the red function we can then calculate find out the values at the interface well, when I say values at the interface, you can see here there are two values, the left values and the right value. Uh, let me try to quickly show you that. So, if I, let me 
let me try to zoom a little bit okay so here if you see uh, at this point for example you have one value and at the same point at the same x location you have another value given by the um, given by this cell and you have one value given by this cell right so at this value this x itself we have two values now this value is called the left value and this value is called the left value and this value is called the right value now using the left value and the right value we need to calculate the flux through this particular interface similarly here we have a left value and here we have the right value now using these two values we need to calculate the flux through this interface right the way we calculate the flux through this especially in uh, i mean in case of 1d it's going to be simple upwind what i mean to say by upwind is now if say the uh, velocity uh, at this interface is towards right then i'll be using the left value and if this flow is towards left that is velocity is negative then i'll be using the right value that is this particular thing uh, this particular way of finding the flux is called upwind flux okay so we'll be using upwind flux in our calculations uh, and it is known to be stable if we use upwind flux okay let's continue with our presentation now um, once we have calculated the flux that is using upwind we can continue and uh, i'll go to the previous slide we can continue and substitute that into this flux here at i plus half and i minus half because if you have if you remember we will get the values at i plus half sorry i plus half and i minus half right so we will get the flux here and here based on this values and those we can then substitute uh for this fi plus half and fi minus half and then calculate the average value at u n plus 1 that's the whole idea that we are going to use for solving this scalar advection equation now uh, when we actually implement it we are we will be having uh we will also need this ghost cells this ghost cells are required for applying the boundary conditions okay so we will be applying boundary conditions using the ghost cells uh, i'll talk about this uh, uh, later when i actually do the implementation of boundary conditions because uh, i will have to specifically talk about some indices and how do we tackle this uh, extra cells and so on and so forth uh, but let us briefly look at what happens to the indices so the number of intervals uh, that is the number of sorry not intervals the number of internal cells if i say they are equal to ni so uh, say for example in this case i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so i have 10 uh, cells here so ni is going to be 10 in this particular case the number of ghost cells is ng in this particular case it is 2 so if we want to do something some operation to for all the cells like for example initially when we initialize the complete domain we will have to iterate through the complete domain in that particular case we will be iterating through all, all the points starting from 0 and going up to ni plus 2ng the 2 ng is because on the left hand side we have 2 and right hand side we have 2 ghost cells so starting from n i uh, sorry starting from 0 up to n i plus 2 n g for iterating through internal cells however we go from n g up to 
n i plus n g so if you see we have two cells on the left so this two cells are going to indicate where our index so index will start since we are starting from zero at the left hand side so n g is going to be two and we are going to go up to n i plus n g that is one less than n i plus n g if we count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so that particular cell is going to be 10 plus 2 so 12 in our case right so that is what will happen so we'll have our index going from ng to ni plus ng so thank you very much and see you soon